Hello, welcome back to Scaffold Design for Scaffolders. I'm Alejandro Garcia and today I will explain the second moment of area. It's a very important concept because we will use it to calculate buckling, bending, deflection, so pay close attention. But first, I will explain the first moment of area. First moment of area measures the area distribution around an axis of reference. Now, in mathematics, it's defined as an integral, depending on if the y axis or z axis, but we are not going to get in, into integrals or advanced calculations. So we are going to do the summation of areas times distance. Now, if you remember, a moment is a load times a distance. So in this case, we have first moment of area. So we have an area times a distance. That's it. First moment of area is area times distance. Now, what are we going to use it for? We will use it to find the same trend of a shape. So, for example, if we have this rectangle, we don't need it because, I mean, by common sense, the centroid or the center of gravity of that rectangle is in the center, correct? But imagine you have a T shape. It can be a, imagine it's a steel beam or it's a concrete beam. Now, where is the center of, of gravity of the steel beam or the centroid of that area? To find it, we are going to use the first moment of area. So in this case, the centroid on Y will be the addition of the area times the, the distance on Y divided over the area. And the same for Z. It's going to be the additions of area times distance divided by the, the total area. Now, let me do an example. Calculate the centroid of this T-beam. Okay, so we have this T-beam that I have divided in two rectangles. And we know that the centroid on the Y axis is going to be the summation of the different areas times their distance on the y-axis. Now, in this case, since the, the shape is symmetrical, we already know that for y is going to be zero. Okay? y equals zero is, is the central axis, the set axis. So we already know that this value here is going to be zero. Okay, it will be somewhere along the set axis. Now, for the set axis, areas times distance. So we have Let's go from top to bottom. The area is 15 times 4. I haven't indicated any units to make it easier. And now the distance. What's the distance from the center of this rectangle to the origin? We have the center is 2 plus 12 below, so that's 14. And then we have the bottom rectangle. So the area is 12 times 5. And the distance is going to be <clears throat> half the height, 6. Okay. 
divided by the total area of the shape. So we have 15 times 4 at the top plus 12 times 5. <clears throat> and that's going to be total. You see? So yeah, we have just to make it easier, 60 times 14 plus 6 divided by 60 times 2. And that's 10. Okay? So, in this case, we will have the centroid on 0, 10. So, roughly, it will be here. Okay, that will be the centroid. So that's it. To obtain a centroid, we multiply the different areas of the shape times the distance to the origin we are considering. The second moment of area, or area moment of inertia, measures the efficiency of a cross-section to resist bend. Before we had area times distance, now we have area times distance squared. As before, what the integral is doing is adding up all the tiny pieces that made up the whole section. Imagine we have a bridge with a line lot. We are going to support that line lot with a scaffold board. What do you think is better to support the load? Having the board upright or flat? Well, from experience, you probably know that it's better to put it vertical on the left. And why? Because it has a bigger second moment of area. Now, if we apply the integral to the rectangle, we are getting this equation. Base times height to the third divided by 12. You are going to use it many times and you will remember. Base times height to the third divided by 12. If you want it for the set axis, then you will have h times the base to the third divided by 12. Now, I never remember which one is for which, so just remember, the formula is base times the height to the third divided by 12. Now, the only thing you have to do is change the values depending on what axis you are considering. And always, the base is parallel to the axis of reference. So, if you are on the left, I mean the shape on the left, and you want to calculate the second moment of area according to the y axis. So you have the base times the h to the third divided by 12. If you want to get it according to the set axis, then the base is parallel to set, so your base will be h and the height in this case will be b to the third divided by 12. Okay. Now, to demonstrate how you get to b h cubed divided by 12, I'm just going to make an example. I'm not doing any integrals, but I will show how you get to the equation. Imagine we have this rectangle that I have divided in 10 rows and 6 columns. So a total of 60 squares make the rectangle. And it has height h and a base b. 
and we are going to calculate the second moment of area on the centroid. I didn't mention it before, but the bh cubed divided by 12 is the second moment of area when the axes are on the centroid of the rectangle. And I will use the equation I said before. So we are adding up, adding up all the tiny areas multiplied by the distance square. So I'm just going to calculate the value for the y axis. I will start with the top row. So we are doing this one here. So we have in total six squares. So we are going to have six squares times the area B6 H over 10 times the distance square. So each, each row or each square has a height of H over 10. So to go up to here, I will have 0 0.45 h that's 0.45 h squared now the top row and the bottom row have the same properties same dimensions and have the same distance to y so i will just multiply by two okay and the same for the other rows so we have in total 12 squares with the same area and for the row below will be 0.35h for that one that was 0.35h now i'm going to do for this one and the one below and that's going to be again 12 b6 h10 and now is one row below, so 0.25h squared. So this distance is 0.25h. And the next row, same thing, b6h10. We are just one row below, so will be 15h. And the last one, oh, the last two, so now we have this one and this one. 12 squares. And that's 0.05 h squared. And the total value you get if you add everything up is 0 0.4125 times 12 over 60 B H Q and that equals 0 0.0825 B H Q. All right, so no need for you to try this at home, or I mean, it's just a short demonstration to show how applying the integrals to a rectangle arrives to the figure of b h cubed divided by 12. Okay? The exact value is 0 0.083. I have gotten 0 0.0825. So I'm very close just by dividing the rectangle in 60 squares. So that's all for the demonstration. Let's calculate the second moment of area of a scaffold tube. Now, the value for a full circle is pi over 64 times the diameter to the fourth. And for a tube, we just have to calculate it for the outer circle and then subtract the value of the inner circle. So, let's do it for a type 4 scaffold tube.
pi equals pi over 64. Now, diameter is 48.3 to the fourth. Internal is 48.3 minus 8. So 40.3 to the fourth. And that's seven six seven six oh, really that's a big number in t20 the value you you get from the table is 13.8 centimeter to the foot okay so we have calculated the second moment of area when the axes are located on the centroid of the shape. But what do you do when the axes are somewhere else or you have a complex shape? For example, an A beam. In those cases, we will use the Stamer's theorem. And it tells you the second moment of area relative to parallel axis. And we, we use it also to calculate the second moment of area of composite sections. Now imagine we have a rectangle, we have the y and z axis on the centroid of the rectangle, and we want to calculate it in relation to this new y axis in red. So the equation is equal to the second moment of area on the centroid times the area plus the area times the distance square. You already know the second moment of area on the centroid, base times the height to the cube divided by two. Let's do an example. Let's do an example with an HEV 1200 profile. I'm using this one because it's much easier to calculate. The numbers are simple. So we are going to calculate the second moment of area of this profile on the centroid. It's a symmetrical shape, so we already know the centroid is at mid height at mid length. But what's the total value of the second moment of area? We will use a stainer. And remember, always second moment of area of a rectangle is the base times the height to the third divided by 12. That's the second moment of area when the axes are on the center. Let's go from top to bottom. So the top area here we have the base twelve hundred times the height is the thickness is fifteen. divided by 12, plus the area, 200 times 15, the distance. So half the height is 100 minus 15 divided by 2, that's going to be 92.5 square. Now, we have the same rectangle on the top and the bottom. So I'm just going to multiply this by two. Because it's the same value 
for this top one and this one. And now the other rectangle, the web. B h cube divided by 12. In this case, base is 9, h is 170. And now, area, 9 times 170. And what's the distance? Why it's on the centroid of the profile, but it's also the centroid of the web. So in this case, this distance is going to be zero. And that's a total of the five. 134 uh, 50 millimeter to the 4. If you check on a steel manufacturer guide or any table online, you will get a slightly higher value because I haven't considered the round shape between the web and the flange. Let's do it for the other axis. We have so if we go from top to bottom, is b h cube divided by 12 but in this case <coughs> the base remember is parallel to the axis of reference so the base is going to be 15 the height 200 <coughs> plus the area 15 times 200 and the distance the, the set axis crosses the centroid of all three rectangles so this is going to be zero for all of them and as before times two because it's the same for the top for the yeah, top flange and for the bottom flange and now we just need to add the web. So the base is going to be 170 times 9 to the third. And since it's on the center, the other distance is going to be zero. And that's 20, 0, 10. Okay, that's how you calculate the second moment of area of a composite section. And to finish, four exercises so you can practice at home. The first one, calculate the centroid of this shape. Now you have a rectangle, a triangle, and there is a hole, a circle. Now, what you have to do is remove that area when you, uh, you, when you do the calculations. Remember the formulas? And in case you don't know, the centroid of a triangle, like this one, is one third of the base and one third of the height. The second is calculate the second moment of area for a type 3 scaffold tube. The third is calculate the second moment of area for a universal beam 127 by 76 by 13 profile. 
similar to the example I did before. And four, calculate the second moment of area for a steel ladder beam. Now, if you think about a beam in bending, who is going to get or support the bending? It's going to be the top core and the bottom core. So when you calculate your second moment of F area, consider only the top and the bottom core. Don't consider any help from from the for the vertical tubes. Just consider you have one tube on the top and one tube on the bottom. And that's it. That's all for today. Thank you very much for watching. Don't remember to click like below, subscribe to the channel, and please leave me comments with any questions or any suggestions you may have. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.